Dr. Betson here. Uh, today we're talking about mallet finger, which is a tendon injury of the extensor tendon of a finger. Just like these drawings here, this is what the mallet finger looks like. Typically what happens is uh, you bump the tip of your finger into something and it ruptures the extensor tendon on the back side of the finger. The palm side flexor tendon is still intact, so then it assumes this posture. Uh, and when that tendon ruptures, uh, you lose the muscle balance between that and the finger no longer straightens. A lot of times you can push it straight passively, but it won't straighten by itself. There's a few things to know about this. Uh, the, 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 the most important thing is that there are some bad variants to this type of problem. So it's not just a straightforward, hey, you've um, torn your, your tendon, here's how you splint, and that's that. There are some bony variants. Uh, in fact, you can actually fracture and dislocate the joint in an extreme case. So I do recommend being evaluated with an x-ray as soon as the injury happens. If you do need surgery, which is only determined you know, by someone who knows uh, you know, how to treat these things, um, you really do want to try to have that surgery within two weeks. Otherwise, the healing process is well on its way and the surgery is harder to do. Um, if you're, if you don't need surgery, and of course you won't know that unless you just, unless you have a workup, um, but if you don't need surgery, usually you've got to start splinting within six weeks. As we're going to learn a little bit later in this, um, you can make a mistake when you're splinting and you actually have to start all over. And if that happens, it's okay. Uh, it does prolong the time. Um, but as long as you're very good about it, um, you know, and you've really started full-time splinting within six weeks, you should have, you know, a reasonable outcome. So as far as the, as far as the x-rays go, here's, here's kind of why you want to do these x-rays. Um, the first picture here uh, is a soft tissue mallet finger. There's a, like a tongue depressor here that's holding the finger up. That's why you don't really see it bent. Um, but you, you know that this is a mallet finger because the person came in with a mallet <laughs> finger. And, um, and so looking specifically right here where the tendon would attach, you know, it looks nice and clean. So that's a soft tissue mallet injury. This here is a bony mallet. Uh, but in this one, the joint is symmetric. You can see um, it's going to be hard to hyperextend this to meet this little piece of bone. Um, so I would probably suggest a pinning for that, which is surgery. Uh, this one here is a little more serious, you know, um, because not only is there a little fracture where the tendon's attached, but the whole joint is dislocated. So of course this one here, you know, would re require surgery as well. Uh, so this is really, you know, and if you look at the kind of the, the skin and, you know, tissue shadow between this one and this one, you really don't see much of a difference. So you can't really tell whether it needs surgery based on the appearance of it. This one here does have some deformity and the deformity is because that joint's dislocated, but this one without the joint dislocation, you know, really uh, the shadow, this, the appearance of the finger looks about the same. So, so as far as splinting goes, you know, everybody's got a, pr a preference. There's certainly all sorts of splints out there. There's little plastic off the shelf type splints. There's ovulate splints. There's thermoplastic splints that are custom molded by hand therapy. There's d advantages and disadvantages of, of each of those things. This is my preferred type of splint. Uh, this was what we would call a Luma foam or Mallet Pro. It's basically just a piece of aluminum with foam attached to it. And then this is tape. Uh, you want to you know, find the right kind of tape, which is typically something that's waterproof, uh, which this is. There's a few uh, waterproof tapes out there. The old fashioned athletic tape is waterproof and then there's a real fancy type of tape that anesthesiologists use. But um, you can see the advantage of this that I really like. So one is that um, you're, the, the splint itself is on the back of the finger, which allows you to have you know, the palm side of your finger available so you can touch things. You can actually feel things. Um, if you work on a computer or something like that, you can type because the palm side, the tip of the finger, you have that sensation, which is important for use. Um, the aluminum is strong enough, um, and you can actually see how I've actually hyped, I've, I've bent this a little bit back here 
just so you've got a little more extension. Um, here's me holding the water bottle with a splint on my finger. Uh, you can definitely use it for things. In fact, I allow people to you know, ski and ride bikes and that sort of thing. Obviously, your finger isn't perfectly normal because you're wearing a splint, um, but it works quite well. So this is my preferred type of splint, um, but certainly other splints would work just the same. When it comes to changing the splint, and this is a probably the most important thing that I've got in this video, is when you change your splint, you have to keep your finger extended. And that's where a lot of the splints, the other types of splints, like if we're looking at this here, a lot of the splints have plastic or something along the palm side. And so you have to be really careful when you pull the splint off that you don't accidentally bend the finger, which it wants to bend. So you, you know, it's not that you bend it on purpose, it's just that you take the splint off without protecting it. So the way I like to do it is this right here, where you, you know, imagine uh, you take a shower, washing your finger, or I'm sorry, taking a shower, you've got your finger covered because a lot of times these splints get super gross if you get them wet. Uh, and then when it's time to change the splint, I like to just prop the fingertip up against the edge of a counter. Um, I do like to have all the supplies ready, you know, so if you said, well, I've um, kept it covered, you know, it's kind of sweaty, it's kind of gross, I wasn't able to wash it. Well, so here you've got a washcloth with soapy water. Here's a washcloth with just like water, clean water, and then a towel. So you're able to like wash your finger. And as long as you're in this position and the finger's supported, and you can see how it's hyperextended just a little bit, and here's where the injury is. Uh, as long as that's being supported and you're not making the mistake and letting it bend, um, you know, you're fine. And I've even pre-cut the pieces of tape and there are hanging off the edge here, a couple extra splints, you know. So what you would essentially do is Prop your finger up like this, take the old splint off. You can cut it with a scissors. You can unwrap it however you want to do that. Wash your finger, and then you put the new splint on. So you have a splint sit there, and you take some tape and you wrap that up. Um, and you want to make sure the splint goes all the way to the fingertip so that it's well supported with a piece of tape here, and then all the way here. I have seen it where it slides one direction or the other, and it does allow a little bit of motion. And you really do need to keep that fully um, extended. The next thing really is how long do you splint it for? So um, now if you asked a lot of different orthopedic surgeons across the country, you'd get a lot of different answers. In general, you know, we're talking six to eight weeks for a bony mallet and six to 10 weeks for a soft tissue. I think six weeks for a soft tissue mallet is probably a little on the risky side, just because the tendon doesn't heal that well right back to the bone, as opposed to bone healing to bone is much more reliable. Once you complete this, so for instance, if you did a, if you had a soft tissue mallet and you splinted it for eight weeks, I would then also splint it for another month after that for four more weeks for high risk activities. And that would be like handling, like handling heavy uh, tools, like if you're working in the garden, digging and doing things like that, or skiing or mountain biking or something like that. You'd want to wear it for those activities just to protect it so you don't re-injure it because that tendon healing is going to be pretty weak. And then also at nighttime to allow any healing to hap uh, happen. So you're putting a little stress on it during the day. And then um, you want to protect it at night while it's healing. So hopefully this helps you. Um, please like and subscribe to this video. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments. Or if you have any suggestions for other videos, let me know. All right, take care.